Good morning, folks. You're watching Plasma Rain on the Sun. We first shared something like this last July. It was on the opposite limb that time. NASA released a few articles about that event just a few weeks ago. We'll come back to this. The evolution of satellite technology, ever more detailed observations, and while the article title focuses on the timeline of the universe, the most important part is that other certain basic assumptions about the universe will have to change. This is an excellent historical look at new evidence on megavolcanic blasts. It took them a while to put it together because their evidence has spread from Jersey to Africa. How much better is the new Landsat satellite? This much better, courtesy of NASA's Earth Observatory. Canary Islands Quake Swarm Update. This is where I said the rumbling had stopped two days ago. There were a few more that day, but yesterday she picked right back up like it didn't like being ignored, and it is continuing today. Chemical spill a few days ago isn't enough to make the news, unless it causes a fish kill, which it is believed to have done. The Byron Nuclear Station did a manual shutdown of a reactor to fix a cooling pump malfunction. They say there's no danger. Australia, the severe weather continues, and yesterday, when I told you you need to be wary, I cannot say I expected tornadoes and gale force sustained winds. You got more coming. Meanwhile, New Zealand drought has spread to the South Island. Say it with me now. Big blue, counterclockwise low, picking up Mediterranean moisture off the leading east edge and depositing it as she crosses the European continent. Keep an eye. The major North American watch zone is moving into the Gulf states. The eastern convergence of air masses will bring severe weather through the weekend and you will need to keep an eye on local warnings. More weather images will be coming at the end. Switching to space weather. Cosmic ray density is elevated like yesterday, but steadier and still within safe range. The lone Earth-facing eruption barely deserves the title yesterday. It was a mini-filament release, but there was significant activity elsewhere. You'll remember the polar radiation event we had a few days ago. Earth's magnetic connection to the sun was surged and it delivered energy directly to us. Well, let's say you're lucky enough to catch a flare in the act. This D region absorption prediction map is good for something else shows the radio blackout areas from X-ray radiation of solar flares. Indeed, that is actually the more primary purpose of this. It's just easier for us to catch long-duration energetic events than these brief flares. This one hit M range and did cause minor radio signal degradation for a brief period. This flare came from the departing active regions, the ones we focused on yesterday. Please folks, don't be shy. Share what you know. The newbies aren't going back to watch 700 videos of mine to see that the sun has been mysteriously favoring her flares to face away from our planet. Now this is partly good. We don't want a major eruption our way, but Earth does need moderate flaring for atmospheric equilibrium, as Earth has been shrinking too much without this aspect of solar energy. The aftermath of this was the plasma rain. Now, if you are thinking, hey, wasn't the Earth footprint over there too? Well, yeah, it might have began the day close to the limb, and when the flares began, I was indeed worried about another surge through our connection. But the footprint had already begun to shift away from the limb around the backside. It's now more than 10 degrees from that flare location. You can see it trying to pull back to the Earth side with four connection points compared to yesterday's three. Right in the middle of all of that is where we got the flare. On to the umbral field. Nothing has changed in my analysis from yesterday. The nicely formed field bulges have a gap on the left, turning in now. And this opening in the solar atmosphere is a magnetic monster known as a coronal hole, and it is the primary earthquake factor. It has taken major uptick forecasting from 75% in 2012 to 90% coverage of significant quake occurrences in 2013, with a 100% success rate on the actual watch periods. Darker and darker on the left, here she comes, and while Uranus aligns with Mars as we see it, we absolutely still are in a minor watch period looking out for one or two possible quakes over the next 36 hours due to the planets and this week's energetic flux. But the big coronal hole will arrive two days before this grouping of conjunctions at month's end. The umbral field will dictate the exact timing, but consider a major earthquake uptick watch to be on your doorstep. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.